Hello, my name is Tarek and I'm an instructor at the VFX school. In this tutorial, we're looking at uh, crowd simulations in Houdini. We'll start out by sourcing geometry, the animation and a rig, in fact, from uh, Mixamo. Then in Houdini, we'll be setting up an agent and looking at uh, preparing an agent for simulation. We'll set up everything we need for ragdoll simulation as well. Then we will uh, generate a crowd with that agent, um, bring it into DOPS and actually simulate it. We'll be looking at bringing in um, forces so, um, so that when they become ragdolls, they kind of explode and fly into the air. Uh, lots of tips and tricks and problem solving along the way as well. The first thing you'll need to do is head over to the Mixamo uh, website, mixamo.com, and just set up an account and log in. Um, and then come over here to the characters tab and just type in alien. Okay, to use the same uh, geometry as us, and then we're going to choose this alien soldier. Use this character, um, and then head over to animation and type in walking. Okay, and then I'm going to use this one. It's kind of confident uh, one called walking. Okay, and then you can play around with that if you like, but I'm just going to leave it at default. Um, download that. I'm going to set it to 24 frames per second as that's the default in Houdini. Everything else is fine. And then download that. Now that we're in Houdini, let's create a new project. I'm going to call this Alien Troops. You can call it whatever, it doesn't really matter. Uh, let's make another a custom folder just for fun. Call it FPX. Okay. Um, I'm going to just delete all of these. And then uh, let's save the scene as well. So save as, call this uh, Alien Troops. I think I just left a gap there. Great, and version one as well. Perfect. Then if you go ahead and find the, the project folder that we just generated, got the uh, FBX there. I'm going to drag and drop my that alien animation into the FBX folder. Okay, then I can get rid of that. Now let's find the crowds um, shelf tool. Okay, so then click on agent. We're going to be using an FBX, uh, which is here. So if we press this, and then that will bring us into our um, project folder with FBX, that walking there. Okay, and then the name of the uh, will be alien troop and the clip name is the so the animation is just we'll just call it walk click OK and then we have it that'll build everything up together for us I'll just um, we won't be using most of these um, so this actually you know brings in the agent for us um, and can set up a few other bits and bobs one thing we do need to do in here is convert this to <clears throat> excuse me uh, convert this to in-place animation, okay? And then we need a locomotion node, which will be the hips, okay? So um, you'll see that if we set this to real-time, what that does, if I turn that off, it'll walk forward. So we need that. We want the actual um, solver, the simulation, to actually drive the, um, the translation of the agents, okay? So that's what this will do for us. Uh, load clips, you can bring in more animations, but we're not going to do that. We're just going to have the one, so I'll just bypass this. Uh, cache this to save it to disk. We don't have much going on here, so we don't need to do that, but you can just click save to disk and load from disk. And agent prep to um, set up things like foot locking, or if you have kind of a separate animation for the arms, or you want to do a ragdoll just on one part, this is where you'll do that. Um, we're not doing either of them, so I'll get rid of these as well. And um, and that's it. So next up is generating our collision layer. So come up here to the shelf tool, click on that, um, select the agent, and press enter. Um, basically, that just drops this down. You could probably just drop this down anyway. Um, so the way this works, we're going to be this is all creating the ragdoll effect, by the way. So we're not going to be actually simulating this geometry. We're going to simulate a simple geometry. Um, so if I click on the head here, um, you'll see a box come in. And if I press W and go into wireframe, you'll see this kind of um, capsule shape. So this is what we'll actually be simulating in bullets because that's uh, much quicker and to have this kind of simple representation, okay? So um, it's a bit difficult to see what you're doing. So what I'm going to do is drop an unpack over here because these are 
the agent is packed at the moment. Here is now back in normal kind of geometry. Um, what that allows me to do is to template this, visualize from here, and then I can see the kind of um, outline of both of them together, all right, um, while we're working on this. So I'm going to click on that, and that gives me this transform box. I'm going to shift click to widen that way. That shift click will widen both at the same time. Shift click and drag it out just to get closer to the shape of the head. Doesn't have to match exactly to something similar. Same thing here. So for the neck, stretch that out. Okay, and then just click without shift to uh, just move the one side by itself. This one's a bit kind of weird. It's off to the side, so we'll have to rotate it. So if you press O on your keyboard, it's the shortcut, and then turn it around so it's kind of parallel to the body it's a bit can be a little bit awkward again they don't have to be perfect then press b don't use these um because it the uh, pivot gets all messed up so I, I tend to not use the transforms when i'm in this mode press b go back to this uh, box and then i can use that to change the location shift click to change the size again uh, just something like that. Oops. Um, I'll press O and just rotate it around again. Now you can take your time. I'm going a bit quickly here just to demonstrate, but you can take your time to try and match up as well as um, to the body as you know as well as you can. Um, then come and do the arms. I'm just going to leave that as default like that same with this side oh let's not forget the his uh kind of shoulder bits here the forearm and then the hand you can do you know every single finger separately if you like but really um it's not going to be necessary in most uh, crowd simulations unless you're really up close and you can see uh, the agents up close which really is not what crowd simulations of four um you don't need to do that just one kind of big glove thing is fine okay that'll do for them um this still looks a bit rotated in a weird way uh, it's okay actually okay and then let's grab these kind of spine pieces stretch that out like that and like that okay down here Shift and click and drag. Oops. No, oh, that's okay, actually. They can um, overlap a bit as well. That's fine. That shouldn't cause any problems. Um, I think the any pieces which overlap and they are constrained to each other, so they will be constrained to each other, they are, the collisions will be ignored between them, I believe. Um, then to the hips here, this one's kind of off to the side as well, which is kind of annoying. So we'll need to stretch that out. Give us a bit of a bigger shape and then we'll rotate it into position. Uh, press O and try and get it nicely slotted into the hips. And about there. Let's look like my camera's moving too much. Back there, a bit over, whoops, that's my own mistake, see, so press B there, you see it was kind of, the pivot was a bit funny, um, and then shift to spread that out a bit, um, and the other axis as well, there we go, that's fine, and then grab the legs, the shins, can kind of make them thinner if you like ideally as well you'd be doing this in a t pose um you know if you have more time but this is fine for our purposes great so that's the uh that's the collision geometry again these shapes are what um houdini will be seeing in the simulation okay this is the geometry that the actually the bullet um sim will actually see so next step is to configure the joints. So I'm gonna press W to come out to wireframe mode so that I can 
click here, make the selection, press enter. And there you'll see we've got a couple more nodes here. Um, we've got a configure joints and you might see some indications of that there. And then we've also got this test ragdoll sim. So this is a little mini simulation packaged up um, to test how the joints and the collision layer are working. So let's just have a look at that. So you can see there, I'm just going to get rid of this for the moment. Um, obviously the legs don't look right, you know, he's, they're bending in a way which is not natural. Um, this, this step can take quite a long time, we're going to kind of do it quickly here, um, but it's something that you can take a lot of time and to tweak to get right, um, but something is, there's a major problem with the legs here, which we can tell, okay? Um, what you can do with this ragdoll, which is kind of handy as well, is set some initial velocity just to get the, the body kind of um, flying around, right? So I'm going to set this to, I don't know, just something random like minus five that way. Uh, let's push it down fast. Um, and I don't know, three in this direction. Okay, just so it's getting pushed over. You get it, so you can see it even more now. You see the legs. And um, when there's something wrong, you'll get some kind of crazy popping and flopping around like that. So let's come into this configure joints. Spacebar and F, W again, and we can, we don't really need to see that now actually, unless we can get rid of it. So, um, yeah, you could see these blue parts that's, well, here we can see the um, this kind of cone shape. So these will be cone twist constraints. Um, and this sets a boundary so this um, joint can move within this cone. Think about it like uh, when a dog wears a cone on its head, right? It, its head can only move within that space. These yellow parts, uh, how much it can twist around that, okay? And then this orange one is kind of the, uh, uh, I believe is the normal, uh, which we don't need to worry about too much. So the legs here, you can see that the cone is this part coming off to the side. So that's obviously not correct. So if we come and click on this, you can see that's way too much movement, right? And then when I try to move this, you can see it's kind of jumping around. So uh, there's obviously something wrong here. Now this kind of shape, can see this kind of funny it's almost like lips or something um, kind of indicates to me that this is back to front right so I can flip this around like that so that we get this nice cone oval um, circular shape right and I'm gonna do that over the legs there um, so I'm only focusing on the legs here because that's the you know major problem you can go around every joint and think about what kind of limits do you know you can do it on your own, um, you know, look at your, how your body moves. Your elbow obviously can't bend backwards that way. You can probably bend more this way. But be pretty, um, you know, um, what would be the way to say it? Uh, these, these boundaries can be broken quite a bit. So um, make the spaces quite small. The cones uh, smaller than you think need they need to be, right? So uh, this... When when they're kind of pushed backwards like that, they can be a bit fiddly to get a hold of. But there we go. So I, I'm getting the sense that these are the you know the right way around now. Okay, so pull them in. So yeah, obviously your leg can move up to here and up to there, but I'm bringing the, these in pretty tight. Okay, so let's go back to the ragdoll here. Press W again and watch that. So that's looking much better now. Again, it's it's not perfect, you know, uh, but from from our simulation, you know, the most of the agents are going to be in the back and just kind of flying randomly into the air. Um, so that's fine for our purposes, um, and this will be where we're moving on to the next step from here. So I'm going to come out to the um, object level here, and then come up to the shelf. Click on where are you? Populate select my oh we've already got that selected so just press enter and there we go that's going to bring in that's going to find that out and bring in our agent here and then scatter it over if you have a um, surface but this is just scattering over a grid um, we got this uh, set up here now let's have a bit more agents like 2000 um, we want to randomize a few of these, okay? So you could randomize if you've got different animations, different agents, different kind of helmets and clothes, you can do all that in here. Um, we're just gonna randomize the uh, scale a little bit, okay? So this is too much, obviously. Um, I'm just gonna 
bring this down to something really subtle 0.05 okay so there's a little bit of difference in their height uh, we also want to randomize the clip time you can play around with the seed or how much that's offset so that's um, at which point in that walk cycle are they you can see this one is has their legs together um, so that looks a bit better there okay um, now coming into the second input here we can put either a piece of geometry or points so points which will take each of these um, agents and put that onto the points and geometry will scatter them so I want kind of like a few rectangles of agents so kind of looking like a bit like a formation so I'm going to drop a line okay the direction I'm going to set this over into the x direction I want this to be 70 uh, meters long uh, seven points on it so there'll be seven rectangles and I'll move it over halfway so it's in the center of our scene there we go if we look at the points there okay and then I'm gonna make a grid okay let's get rid of the points there and on this this grid is going to be 9 by 70 so a long thin grid and the agents will be scattered along onto this um, and then just a copy to points like that oops there we go okay so that gives us a kind of basic formation look plug that in and those same agents will be scattered along on those um on those rectangles so next we want to simulate this so again i'm going to come out here to the uh, object level and select the crowdsource and then come up to simulate make sure we check both of these okay so these are the um uh the clips or animations well actually the states right so if you've got a walk you might have run or walk to whatever that is um you know select what you want you know click accept on that and then let's dive inside the dops in to see what we've got so we got a whole load of nodes set up here you can see that ragdoll and the walk up here okay so if you could have more if you select more so um the only thing we're going to do for the moment is come into the crowd sol solver and turn off the avoidance because because it's kind of like a military walk they're just kind of walking forward i don't want them spreading out and doing something weird so let's come out here and set up a camera let's uh visualize the crowd sim actually not for the moment let's just go to the crowd source for the moment and visualize this so that we can set up a camera so i'm going to drop uh, a camera here Okay, just come on, it's fine. Let's look through that camera. Now I'm gonna come back 40 so we can see more. Let's go up a little bit and tilt down a little bit, minus 10. And then I'm gonna change the um, focal length down to 35. Okay, so we can see a few more of these um, aliens. And then, so just for a really simple animation, I'm going to set this to minus 10. So we're going over to the edge of our, our scene here. And then I'm going to add dollar, uh, where's my dollar? Dollar T for time. So that with time, it's going to move over towards the right, something like that. Okay. And obviously, when this is simulated, they'll be walking um, towards us. We could try a few frames of that. Um, you can see now that they're simulated the the um simulation is driving the walk and they're coming towards us driving their their translation they're coming towards us and that will be you can either watch that there or you can dive into the crowd source here and um when we click that shelf tool we generated this as well just bringing in that um, crowd geometry too so now we get to the fun part we're going to be setting up the uh, ragdoll simulation so I'm going to come out here make sure the camera is visualized so if I back away we can actually see the camera and I'm going to go in here and then yeah we can actually see good show all objects so I can see that camera I'm going to template the grid here and then drop a draw curve node okay so um, this will allow me just to draw a curve surprisingly <laughs> Okay, come to projection and set that to uh, YZ. No, sorry, not YZ. Uh, ZX plane so that we can draw on the ground. Okay, so the idea is we have this kind of force traveling through the agent and making them fly up all over the place, almost like a giant 
like a worm in the ground or something like that okay so if you press space around two that will drop us on top and um, I'm gonna go to the last frame can we see the camera I can't see it one second all right oh there it is maybe I'll make the background dark so we can see it uh, so that's dark there we go so yeah basically because I want the end of this line to be in line with the camera so on the last frame so you can see the animation on the camera there so I'm gonna set put this to the last frame space brand 2 again it's kind of hard to see the camera now but it, it is kind of there uh, let's see if we change the lighting maybe no but I can see where it is anyway on that line so let's draw this line uh, make sure we're in the um, draw mode so if you come here and click on the um, this kind of gizmo this handle thing and then you can just click and draw so I'm going to start over at the right here um, come over to the side come around into the middle and then back again towards the camera like that so that should be fine you can do something different if you like bear in mind that what we're going to do is this point is going to travel from here to there over 240 frames so that's the speed of the object traveling so if you have something crazy like squiggling all over the place it's going to be moving much much quicker right so now that we have that press spacebar and one to go back into our spacebar and one to go back into our normal camera you can see there um if we go into the no we won't go there we'll look later at the actual camera uh, let's just resample it so come down to here let me um, just get rid of that template as well so we could use this resample to kind of smooth it out a bit maybe um, let's look at the points let's uh, I'm gonna make give it a few less points that will kind of even it out a bit set this to two so we don't need so many it's great so the way that we're gonna get that actual animation traveling is to use the curve node Okay, and you can kind of see what it's doing there. It's kind of traveling down the length of the um, of the line there. It's kind of, well, if I come in here and just kind of do that, you can see what we're going to do, right? So on the first frame, we can animate this um, term here, okay? Um, so go to the first frame, alt-click on that, so it's set to zero, and then go to the last frame. I'll set this to either one or you can do it a bit less up to you where you want this to end so you could you know um, on the last frame if you want that to be there or if you want to start on the first frame um, a bit later okay so ah, I can see what I've done there so in the first frame we want zero on the last frame we want one okay that's fine and now If we watch through, you can see it kind of traveling through. What I do, I want this to be linear, the animation. So come into the animation editor, select both the points and set this to linear. Okay. Um, we'll also need to set this second U to zero. So that's, we just have the one point at the front. Okay. I'm going to drop a sort because we, yeah, we don't want this whole line. I'm going to drop a sort and change the point. I'm going to reverse it. So what that will do, if we come to the point at the end here, will always be point zero. So that's the one that we want to use. And then I'm going to drop a copy to points. All right, so the points go into the right. And then into the left, we're going to use a metaball. So metaballs are great for forces. Um, because they give you, um, you know, they, uh, they it's almost like a volume, so you get a sense of the forces pushing out in all directions. So great for explosions and things like that. In this case, not really an explosion, but um, something similar. Um, so we don't want one point, one metaball on each point. So come here to target points and just put zero, and that will grab that initial point. And this metaball will now follow along that line. Perfect. Um, now for the size of this meta ball, so I'm going to make it keep it quite short, but make it wider in both this diameter and this diameter. Okay, so all of the agents that are inside there will be shot up and kind of out away as well. You know, further closer out to the edge, the more angular that 
direction that um, impulse will be but as soon as they're out of the meta ball they'll they'll just be uh, gravity will take over from that point um, so we need a couple of things here we need a I'm going to convert this back into normal geometry here because we will let me turn that off use this as bound turn off these points as well to actually uh, sorry drop a null here so this bound will be what's actually used to convert the agents into that ragdoll state and then on this side oops i didn't mean to do that get rid of that little thing we're going to call this out uh, force okay and then on this will be called whoops let's drop an actual force node so that we have some actual force so I want radial force, so that's pushing out in all directions. But I'm also going to have a directional force on top of that, okay? And set the actual actual force to minus two, so this pushing up a bit stronger. Well, double actually, double the strength pushing up as it is pushing around. So we get a nice kind of vertical um, uh, sense of force, okay? Um, so let's. I'm going to set this to manual while we go back into the simulation. And start working on um, getting all that working in here okay now a few bits and bobs we need to do in here let's add a ground plane so this is kind of handy we got the static solver set up so we can just plug that in and it's ready to go in the walk state you can see we got this um, uh, ragdoll um, what it does with ragdoll and it's set to ignore right now we don't want that we want animated static so it's still walking but it's ready to become uh, that is ready to jump into that ragdoll state here it is ragdoll all the time the ragdoll state right um, so how do we actually transfer into that we need a transition so I'm going to drop a crowd transition and with a transition you need a crowd trigger okay so when the trigger is uh, the when the trigger is met I suppose you could say um, we are uh, we the transition is is done from walk and not into run into ragdoll and the trigger for us will be the object bound which is the default one so anything that goes into this object bound which is that um, that meta ball so if we go to the crowdsource out bound whenever the agents walk inside here they become they change from walk to ragdoll and I want that check to be continuous any at any points that they're inside trigger them over into a uh, ragdoll so that's it for that now for the actual force we'll be adding to the bullet solver and i want to use this um, pop metabol force and for the pop metabol force um, this doesn't seem to work with this uh, bullet solver so i just use exchange this out for abd uh, sorry, not happy. Rigid body solver. Okay, so I'm going to connect that up there. Get rid of this solver and connect the uh, pop metable force down here. So again, here we'll need to find that uh, force that we made out force that's bringing in that that metable geometry. Um, we need to set a scale. So I'm going to set this to minus seventy. That's the strength. It's kind of almost like a multiplier on that force that we created. I'm also going to add a vex expression to this. I'm just going to copy in the code here and then I'll explain it. So what I'm doing here, we're generating this float attribute called um, scale mult. So we're, multi we're affecting this value and we're fitting the rand of um, the, so each agent will have an ID um, and we're creating a random value of that ID, which will be and the rand, the result of that will be a value between 0 and 1 and I want it to change to between 0.5 and 1 so uh, we'll have each agent will have a value between 0.5 and 1 randomly somewhere within that and then we multiply this force by that so if it's 0.5 we'll have uh, 35 and if it has 1 it will be this false force so that basically just gives some variance to the strength on the force applying on the uh, agent so it's a bit more kind of natural looking okay so I believe that is everything needed let's go to auto update maybe we'll just run a few frames quickly we should see uh, the 
the guide here for both of these as the this starts to simulate. There we go. So we can see the agent starting to fly um, and they will collide with the ground when they hit it. Uh, we've already got, I think gravity is actually taken care of in the crowd solver here. So we don't need to add that in. Now let's go out and just um, set up a simple bit of um, geometry to get a nice preview of this. So in the crowdsource, um, let's drop a, we're going to visualize from this point here. Okay, let's turn that template off. So let's give these a nice color. Well, just set them to black. Okay. And then maybe just drop a ground, uh, let's drop a grid. make that grid really big so 200 by 200 and give it lots of rows like that let me just template this and then come to the back of it and then select the points of our grid of the grid and there we go Go. And I'm going to select this point and then shift A and middle mouse button there. So I select this row of points and then press tab and go to soft. Oops, not soft peak. Uh, that might work actually, but I don't want that. Uh, I will have to do that again. Go to select the points again here. Shift A, middle mouse button. Nope. Let's try that again. Shift A, middle mouse button. There we go. And then soft transform is what I want. I'm going to set the radius to 40 and the height to 35. Okay, so that gives us a nice kind of curved back wall. Uh, let's give it a color. Make this one white. And then so that they we can see them together, I'll have to pack this so that the, the, the colors kind of work. Again, you, you might want to do something more complex here for the for your render, but this is just for our nice preview. Okay, merge them together. Um, and then let's drop a nice bit of light. So I'm just going to drop an environment light. And then let's just find the kind of Houdini defaults here. I like to use this Skylit um, garage. Come into the camera. There we go. And then I think what I'll do is rotate it around this way, like that. Okay, looks a bit more dramatic, very scary. Very cool. Um, get rid of that. Get rid of the camera view there. Okay, so I think that's it. Um, maybe we can. Uh, if we go to smooth wire shaded, get rid of those circles on the floor, they're kind of annoying. Let's go to hide other objects and press D on my keyboard and go into light just to get some, um, make it sure this is the best quality that we can get. Light sampling all the way up. Let's turn on anti, uh, sorry, ambient occlusion as well. Go to full screen there. Okay, make sure we save it. Should be saving as long <laughs> all the way through as well. And then uh, run a flipbook of that. So let's check out our cool simulation. Come here and press play. So you can see them all flying up in the back there, which looks good. You can see them colliding, landing on the floor. Um, I really like this kind of wave flowing through the simulation, which looks really nice. Um, you know, the walking looks fine as well. It's a bit hard to see with, without texture on the floor, but their feet look as kind of an important thing that they're planted to the floor. Um, you can see the variation in the height as well. Some are flying really high. Some ants are flying so high. You can play around with those values if you wanted, you know, really crazy like them flying really. You can just set that um, fit range to um, different values if you like. But it's looking good. You know, the, uh, the kind of behavior of the ragdolls is pretty nice. Um, so if you'd like to learn more, um, I highly recommend uh, heading over to the uh, VFX School website where you can sign up to our Houdini Renaissance program where we not only cover crowds but um, a lot of other stuff as well. This this scene, this is a uh, Vellum simulation. Um, we do some RBD stuff and also Pyro. 
Um, so I'm going to come down here and just show you the kind of stuff that we can that you can learn in module three. That's massive control, which is all about crowds, and we go into way, way, way much more detail than uh, what we've done today. We've got hours and hours of great content there. Here we've got this massive crowd scene with, uh, let me just play that through so we can go back to it so I can talk about it. Um, yeah, so there we've got that massive crowd scene with um, lots and lots of age and we're looking at textures and um, combining the simulation with, um, with Vellum simulations as well. Um, let me just wait till that gets back to the start so we can watch it again. This is just kind of the introduction, but even in the, f in the first simulation here, we go, we're covering uh, much more than what we've done today. Uh, in the second one, yeah, so we got flags and this kind of Mexican wave as well going around the, um, the uh, stadium, which is really cool, uh, looking at different ways of triggering. Um, here we got um, really great ragdoll exercise, so, and we're combining these um, this ragdoll simulation with an RBD simulation, so some of the chairs kind of um, get thrown around as well. So that's really good, some extreme forces there. Here again, bringing in um, forces, so you can see, it's kind of hard to see there, but there are agents um, caught up into the tornado and getting sucked up into it. So working with pop forces. Uh, with all of these as well, we've got all, you know, different agents, we've got different clothes, different clips, different animations. Uh, same thing again here, we got, uh, we're combining the simulation with an RBD simulation and kind of avoiding the buildings and stuff like that as well. So, um, you know, I hope that you can uh, join in and uh, further your education with crowd content.